Michelle McCullough was a regular visitor while her father was in respite at a Sydney nursing home last year. Terry Reeves had dementia and it was his first time in care. On the first day, he said to my sister, as they sat down and had a cup of coffee, it's a lovely place, but I'm just not ready for this yet. Which was heartbreaking. Are you going to have another swim, mate? I'll get another apple. Yeah. Terry was diagnosed with Alzheimer's at 64. Seven years on, the disease had progressed, though he still functioned well. Terry was living here at Garden View Nursing Home in Maryland's Western Sydney. <sighs> Getting tired? Yeah, I, I suppose I am. Four days after his daughter took this video, she was shocked to find her father tied to a chair in his room. He was left in a room by himself, tied into a chair. Why, well, it's... You wouldn't tie your dog up and leave them like that, let alone an elderly man. The home later obtained consent from the family to restrain Terry if he was a danger to himself or others. But Michelle claims it was used too often and for too long. In one 24-hour period, he spent a total of 14 hours restrained. You all right, bud? Every single day, there was a family member there. And every single day, he was in a restraint. Other residents were also restrained. And he's shuffling along with the chair. She was so distressed by this man, she filmed him. Was anyone disturbed by this? No, everyone just behaved as if it was normal. Well, it, it's, it's a breach of his human rights. We showed the video to the Queensland public advocate, Mary Burgess, who says, because there's no regulation on restraints in aged care, a nursing home can use them when and how it wants. We know there are people who have challenging behaviours and it's in their interests and the interests of others around them to be managing that. But you can't have these things um, operating in, in a legal vacuum. If this was happening to anyone who wasn't part of the um, aged, uh, the aged population in a nursing home, um, it would be regarded as criminal. Michelle believes her father was also given antipsychotic medication as a chemical restraint. That day we couldn't even get him to wake, couldn't get him to look at us, nothing. That was the day that we asked them to see his medical charts and they showed us it and said, see, We've given him nothing. When we checked out and took him home on the last day, my mother received a bill in the mail from the chemist, which had three boxes in total containing 180 antipsychotic medications. Garden View Nursing Home said those drugs weren't all used and Terry Reeves was given antipsychotics on just six occasions. It said it's changed its policy on physical restraints and we regret that these improvements were not in place when Terry Reeves was a resident. Michelle McCullough asked for her father's records but was told she needed a subpoena. Hello, Mr Charles. Professor Henry Brodati is Australia's foremost authority on dementia. Although nursing homes need consent from families or guardians to give antipsychotics, he says that rarely happens. We did a survey of nursing homes oh, over a decade ago. We found only 6.5% of people who'd been started on antipsychotics in nurse, or any psychotropic in nursing home had written consent in their file. Another 65 there would be verbal consent uh, documented. Do you think that GPs are also being pressured into prescribing antipsychotics and sedatives? Oh, very often. Uh, a nurse will ring up and say, Mrs Smith is being agitated, she's going to other people's rooms, she's screaming all night, uh, can you give her something? And of course that's the easiest thing to do, to give her something.
84-year-old Margaret Barton was given drugs for agitation at two nursing homes on Victoria's Mornington Peninsula. At the first, Craig Care Mornington, the doctor prescribed a sedative, oxazepam, to be given by staff as needed. Three weeks on, he tripled the drug, a dosage later described as excessive. She just seemed to be completely out of it. We just thought that this was about the uh, advancing dementia. Um, you know, as, as lay people, we don't know a lot about these things. Margaret's husband, Harold, wanted to visit her daily. So a month after being in Craig Care, he moved her to nearby Mequacare Park Hill. When she was transferred, she arrived with instructions to be given oxazepam three times a day, plus extra, as needed. Over the next 10 days, Margaret had seven falls. Because I think she had become a little bit aggressive, um, she was given drugs. And because of the drugs, she lost her balance and she got a bruising of her black eye and um, broken pelvis. In fact, terrible conditions really there. When I finally got the call that she'd been admitted to uh, Frankston Hospital um, and I went to uh, see her, um, I just, it was just utterly unbelievable because she just looked like, um, you know, skin and bones. And they said, oh no, look, you know, she'll be okay, you can go home. So I travelled the two and a half hours uh, back home again, um, only to get a, a phone call the next morning that she died. <laughs> and I wasn't there. I wasn't, I wasn't there and she, and she wasn't, she was by herself. No one was with her. The coroner found the 84-year-old died of pneumonia caused by rib and pelvic fractures and that the medication regime contributed to her physical decline and death. Margaret Barton died after being in care for just over eight weeks. In a statement to the ABC, Craig Care and Mequacare said staff gave medications as prescribed by the doctor and they have since improved their processes. These specialists say the use of physical and chemical restraints should be top of the agenda for the Royal Commission. There's some fantastic practices happening in nursing homes now, and they should be models of what other nursing homes can do. And they're not doing it with extra cost. They're doing it with change of attitude or change of practice. Australia is one of the few um, modern Western countries to still not have any framework for the use of these practices in aged care. And we know from the research that the use of restrictive practices on older people actually causes them harm, psychological and potentially other physical harms. Hi, Dad. Mm. Hello. Mm. He went in as a man who could feed himself, who could take himself to the bathroom, who could engage in a conversation, to come out and, and be a man who couldn't feed himself, needed assistance walking, couldn't take himself to the bathroom lost all of that. Do you think that's just part of the dementia? Not that quickly. It just seems to me utterly bizarre that how mum can go into a, uh, a nursing home being quite reasonably healthy but suffering from dementia and we expected her to live for quite a number of years uh, later um, and yet to find that uh, in, in eight weeks time she's dead. And uh, you know, you just can't help feeling that the system killed mum. Uh, there's got to be better alternatives. <laughs>